Welcome, one and all, to whatever day of Advent we are on at this point, because all the days blur together and I can't keep track anymore. Let's get right on with it, because I have big things planned for our colony for today. So without further ado, behind One Punch Joris himself on day 14 here of December, we have a mod that causes eating without a table to just straight up kill you. A mod I was kind of hoping we'd have a few more days before we got to, because now I have to babysit every single colonist. I did heavily consider vetoing this, but you know what? Democracy rules here. I am at the uh, the behest of the people, and therefore, I have thrown it in, despite my better judgment. Day 15, our Joris preview of today. We have a fan favorite, shall we say. Vaporee Joris. Joris Porion. That sounds way better. And I mean, you guys all know that in terms of male Rim Rim and female Rim Rim breeding, the Joris Porion is the most... Com As always, throw your mod suggestions down in the comments. The most upvoted one will make its way into the advent calendar for day 15. Well, I say mod suggestion, but basically choose the next thing that's going to ruin the game. Oh. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Yeah, no, thanks, everybody. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the Christmas series, and uh, moving on to the next series starting tomorrow. <laughs> yep, here it is again, Rimworld. Yada, yada, yada. Let's move on with the advent calendar. Now, silly me, I thought I, I, thought I read the first time around that it was the mod Eating Without a Table Kills You. In fact, I must have made a mistake, because now I reread it, that quite clearly says triple trouble and to be fair even though the triple trouble mod yes wasn't the one that it was voted on yesterday's episode in the end was very highly upvoted every other day so far so i think that is a fair consolation prize and one that won't kill our main character in the most ungratuitous way possible so to clarify the way the triple trouble mod works it will spawn in these little creatures called tribbles who breed at an exponential rate and will eat everything on the map so the idea is you kill them before you starve to death i assume but you could just kill them and eat them, couldn't you? Might be a bit of an oversight. Could we weaponize them? Oh, speaking of weaponized, where did you get that beehive? <laughs> New tribal era meta, summon minions and have them throw beehives at your enemies. Well, well, well. If it isn't the Gora Nation. They've got straight up angels. Wowee. Now, one of the many important things I have planned for today were weapons and armor for our people, along with ideally some defenses closer to the actual city itself. Maybe draw another huge line across the entire island as, as a gigantic embrasure. Maybe a funnel. They're going to prepare for a while, then attack. Okay. That gives us ample opportunity for our good friend Dr. Christmas to... Oh, well, they've already started firing. What sort of range have you got, Sue? That's gigantic. I was going to say that gives us ample time with Dr. Christmas to summon some elemental defenders to try and... Hopefully soften this raid up a little bit. Even though we have combat readiness check, of course, it is still... <laughs> it is still a little biased in favor of the AI. Get them, boys. Or oh, two of them. Wow, is that really it? Yeah, see, I'm not a massive fan of the quote-unquote defenses raining down giant balls of magic at our base. Wow, they're actually doing a great job. They're taking out a couple there. And then with Sue's incredible range, we might be okay. Definitely getting everybody a ranged weapon, though, is very much a top priority. I'm not sure the Salamander can use ranged weapons, so I guess we'll find out. It also just occurred to me that they sent a naked angel with a beer bottle to raid us. <laughs> More new lovers. Oh, good. What horror is it going to be today? Dr. Christmas and Amarthrian. Why are they all falling in love with the elf slaves? Dr. Christmas, they're elves. They're here to work and make toys for all the good little citizens of the Rimworld. Or in Elrang's case, eat a lot of food and do <laughs> very little else for the colony. I... What? A ram approaches. Between frantic bleats, the sheep arrives at your colony to say that he's a celebrity chef. He can cook excellent meals if you let him stay. Um... Right. Okay. <laughs> Pops Ramsey. I, I guess you've got a new colonist then. There really is no wonder we're getting our ass handed to us in a lot of these raids, right? When we've only got three actual colonists. Oh, and jokes aside, he is actually probably the best choice for Chef right now. Given that he's got a double passion in it. And he can't do anything else, really. All right, you know what? I'm in. The High Council of Elves. Logging on my tropical island? This is my tropical island to destroy. How dare you? And we do need a replacement now for the one we lost yesterday. I can't send Sue in there to bludgeon them. Otherwise, Sue will kill them with the Omni tool. Speedy? Bring the baseball bat. Just want to get yourself a Christmas tree and a giant salamander with a baseball bat bobs you over the head. <laughs> she caught fire? 
Wait, is that what the salamanders do? Special abilities. Salamanders radiate incredible amounts of heat, making them very dangerous in closed spaces. Oh. Salamander's bike can set a target on fire. I feel like in some way giving the giant salamander a baseball bat. What a fucking sentence I'm about to say. Giving the giant salamander a baseball bat has made it less good in combat. But it has kind of worked perfectly. All we need to do is throw down a prisoner bed. And because they're on fire, we can just we can just haul them off. <laughs> Already, this is a fantastic start. So back to the plan then. I want to get everybody a ranged weapon at the very minimum. Luckily, we've looted or crafted enough bows at this point that we should be all right not having to worry about it so much. Ah, oh, the bad news is I don't think the salamander can use a bow, which makes a lot of sense given that it doesn't have arms. We'll just keep it with its fire breath then. It's not nearly as comical, but it works a lot better for taking prisoners. Dare I ask, can the celebrity chef Ram pick up a bow? Oh, damn it. Unfortunately not. Okay, well, it was a good idea while it lasted. We are at a massive disadvantage in that case, given that we have a colonists. Only three of them can use weapons. Don't have a choice. We're going to have to arm the slaves. My God, do my eyes deceive me. We can build simple beds, basic tables, stools, benches, and more. What a time to be alive. Oh, although we might not be alive much longer because now our best fighter, Theodore, officer of the Empire, has to leave. I would love to keep him. That, that, that is genuinely a massive loss for the colony because he was one of the best people we've got to fight with right now. <laughs> but there is our quest complete. Now, this guy was going to pay us in... Yeah, that's it. Tornado generators and glitter world medicine that we can use. There are no technology limitations on medicine, so that's pretty good. Ah, there we are. Sue converted Magnician to our ideology away from Light Army <laughs> towards Innocent Christmas. We'll just get her enslaved and equipped as soon as possible because we need all the fighting force we can. Eventually, I think when Dr. Christmas and Sue and Robo made come into their own a little bit with their magic powers, we might not be in such a bad situation. It is going to be a little while, though, before we can do anything with Robomaid and Dr. Christmas. We need to stop a lot of Devil Strand, and we'll need to find some way to try and get Magicite, which is the item that you use to craft kind of scrolls and powers for them. In the meantime, I think a gigantic wall around everything we know and love probably wouldn't hurt. In fact, surely you've leveled up a couple of times since... Oh, yeah, there we go. So we can now get two points into Protean, now, next time we use Chaos Tradition, I suppose we use it right away here. That will give her four powers now, I believe, rather than the two. Yeah, so let's definitely use that as soon as possible. Inner Fire and Blink are very good. We've swapped it out for Summon. That summons objects to her. That's not the same as, say, summoning a minion. Attraction. creates a large shadow that draws all nearby pawns into its sensor. So it might be good to getting carrots into melee range. Bestow Might. Okay. And Kinetic Shield. Not bad. Good survivability there. I'll be honest, I probably will re-roll that when the second it comes off cooldown. Then we need some sort of offensive power here. A magic missile, a fireball, a lightning bolt, just something. Sue, come on. Frustray fireball. That I will take. Oh, and rather concerningly, consume corpse. <laughs> that actually could be very, very good. Consume a corpse or undead to replenish mana. Wow, okay. And if we right-click those as well, she will automatically cast those now in combat. That seems pretty good. Makes me feel slightly more confident about some of the encounters we're going to have here. It's not perfect, but it's definitely an improvement. Ah, oh, there you go. It's a Christmas miracle. Magnesian, welcome. Put you with my steadily decreasing collection of... Oh, elves. Okay. I think the town's coming along pretty nicely, to be honest with you. It's, it's going to have to go far to defeat Ohmstown, but I think already it's kind of coming into its own a little bit. It could really give us some furniture, though, huh? Well, those basic beds. What are they like? Ah, uh, fur bed, double fur bed. Oh, is that it? We can build it out of Devil Strand, which is a pretty big deal. What are they in terms of comfort? 0 0.71. <laughs> I will admit, I feel like comfort isn't the top priority for the majority of our citizens. 0 0.87. Granted, that has been built and has good quality and has the additional other stuff going for it. What's its base level? 0.68. It would be an upgrade to build the actual fur beds then, huh? It's only a very slight upgrade, but bear in mind we'll get the Devil's Tram refunded from the bedrolls, so I'm not really that bothered. I am going to give the elf some furniture. Hear me out. I know that sounds a little bit crazy. All we know in law is that Santa enslaved elves. We don't know how he treated them. He might have treated them quite nice. Well, I mean, and as far as you can treat elven slaves for, for eternity to craft crappy toys for children as a goddamn minotaur sleeping in the doorway 
<laughs> of course, you would spawn in on that side of the giant defensive wall. Now, this one is an earth rift, so we have to act fast because it'll bring about toxic fumes and send animals berserk. Uh, we currently have, for reference, 12 boomalopes. <laughs> <laughs> so this could end up being quite a messy affair unless we are fast on stopping this. Sue, I'm actually going to disable your powers. Oh, look, I would love to blast this portal with her powers, but I don't think we're going to have a chance to do it. If we bring you over here, can you consume the corpse of that, of that fallen elemental? She absolutely can. Brilliant. Okay, and then frustrate the portal? No? A, a firebolt the portal? 19 damage. Fantastic. What are we firing at right now? Is it is it an insane animal? It is. You know what? Completely ignore it. Let's just go for the portal. Get it out of the way. Elementals are coming through the rift. Watch out for that ostrich. Sue, kill the ostrich. Oh, good lord. Well, we got kind of close. Now is probably the best time for Delta Christmas to send out our own elemental defenders, huh? We're playing tower defense games now. Oh my god, we sent our own earth elementals. Well, that's going to confuse things. Okay, okay, you know what? Just ignore them entirely. Oh, shit, Salamander, get out of there. Let's just bring you guys around to go and attack their portal again. We don't want to fall into this trap repeatedly where we're constantly trying to push back a horde. Our own elementals there have been an absolutely fantastic distraction. Come on, bring it down. 82. There, it's done, it's done, it's done. Get away. Shit, run, Salamander. Get out of there. He's down. My God, I hope that explosion isn't too large. Otherwise, that will have been... All for nothing. Is that a berserk rhino? Oh my god, all of the animals have been driven mad. This isn't just a few. Holy crap. How are we doing? A gigantalope there has gone mad as well. Boom rats. Non-boom rats. Is that portal actually going to explode? Do we have to deal fatal damage to it? Bring it down. Come on. 22. Come on, one more shot. 22. Come on, one more shot. It's all down to the... Two, uh, two left. Are you joking? Please. There we go. Freedom at long last. We brought down the rhino. I suppose that's a start. And how many of these elementals are ours? Uh, that one is. We've got boom rat. We've got a tiny little dinosaur there nibbling at our ankles. Okay, so let's say ignore everything and tend to Dr. Christmas. How's Speedy doing? Speedy is actually fine. Yeah, Speedy was just almost horribly killed, but isn't actually bleeding out at all. Are these all our elementals? Oh, we're good. Yeah, we have nothing to worry about. Oh! No, you did not just shoot Pops the celebrity chef in the head. Cut off fresh. TX69's ruined Del Arrow. Cut his head clean off. That is an unfortunate side effect of war. And it really is just a lesson to be learned. Don't bring your celebrity chef sheep into battle. My god, these animals are still going mad. They're still going mad. What is causing this? The Minotaur has gone mad. Right, Dr. Christmas is at no risk. 27 conditions need tending, but he's not going to bleed out. Same with Speedy. How are you doing? A Marthrian. Okay, let's get you tended. Sue, come back up here. Let's tend her before that Minotaur comes over here. Is anything going to catch fire? Quite possibly. Oh, look, it's raining. Okay, we should be fine. Let's just be very careful about these Minotaurs because they do have a special attack. How are you doing? You're not going to play it out now. Let's just, let's just give it hell. Do what you can. Are we out of its range? We're not. It was just very inaccurate there. Okay, that was... Potentially game ending. That was pretty much the worst thing that could have possibly happened. Even the wall wouldn't have helped out against that. There is a slight problem with my grand plan of sticking a giant wall around everything again. We don't have any stone left at all. As in, not only are we out of blocks, there isn't a single chunk on the map. We have enough steel we've looted from ruins and ship chunks, though, to build a quarry. The question is, can we even put it down anywhere? Because there isn't any on quarry stone on the surface. I guess we've got mini quarry. Okay, we've got some underground seams, the largest of which, of course, is right in the middle of the church. Not really super ideal there, is it, pal? Uh, this isn't too bad up here, and it's adjacent to the stockpile as well. I suppose we could drop it there. It it's certainly not perfect, but it's not bad. Then we take our elves, and we say, enjoy your time in the mine. <laughs> I will admit, it's wishful thinking to assign Elrang work in the quarry. You know what? I was absolutely sleeping on Nagnissian a little bit. 12 intellectual, double passion, 11 artistic, single passion, talent trader. She's a good negotiator. Social price plus 10% and she gets a flat bonus to trade price. Let's turn you in that case into a permanent researcher. Oh, look, we can build a simple research bench. It's 25 steel a piece. We don't have any way to make more steel right now. So that would be... Quite a sizable investment. How's the quarry coming along? It is finished. Mini quarries are only 50 apiece, so I guess we could throw down two research benches. Oh, no. 
requires stone cutting research. I've been thoroughly bamboozled. That means we're going to have to caravan out to get stone chunks. <laughs> limestone. I'm looking for limestone. Okay, there's some there. So let's head a caravan down to here. Have we got any pack animals? Nothing. I guess we'll take whoever can carry the most in this situation. Well, I had to adjust the caravan somewhat because it turns out taking either a giant salamander or a tiny robot made doesn't work. The question is, how much can we carry with only Sue and the elves? The answer is not very much at all. Oh, good. So basically, it's either we tame this elephant or we give up on trying to build the wall. New idea. We take every single person and we set their highest priority to research. That is absolutely not stone cutting. And that's also not stone cutting, but that's fantastic. Unless it's sowing of red lentils. That means we should be able to make gourmet meals unless they've changed it. Mm, no, last time I checked, Tello is also not stone cutting. We've got a best team on this. Although, look at the speed we are going through research now. My God. It's that big salamander brain and that big demon brain and that small elf brain. Oh, fish traps could be quite good. I've never actually used that before. Fish trap. Hey, yeah, there we are. Uh, we got out of bamboo. That's fantastic. Passively catches fishes. Robot maid, will you marry me? <sighs> robot maid, robotic maid, will change her last name to nothing because she's marrying a fucking robot. What the hell is going on? <laughs> what's, what's happening? What is, what's happening? I should probably build them a double bed, shouldn't I? Gotta keep our, gotta keep our robot lovers happy. Oh, well, that's gigantic. We can lean heavily on the magic side of things to make up for our lack of arms here, given that we've... I mean, when I say lack of arms, I mean literal lack of arms, given that we've got a giant salamander, a robot hoover, and a brain-damaged elf. The big issue I can foresee is we probably don't have the resources to build any of the facilities. Now, look, I know that this research quite clearly says way bread of the elves. It's Lembus bread. It's an elven food. But it is arguably the best food we have access to right now and probably will ever have access to. It is very, very powerful. Sure, it doesn't come with the mood bonuses of, say, gourmet meals, lavish meals, fine meals. But it does give a lot of bonuses. I'm not entirely sure that we can actually make it, though, because we don't have proper cooking facilities. Uh, no, that could be a problem. So there might be a way to go before we can do this. We do have a fueled stove here and gloomy furniture. I'll try that. Building out of bamboo doesn't seem... <laughs> Doesn't seem entirely the safest strategy, I'll be the first to admit. Ah, yeah, there we go. Perfect. Grind Lembus flour, grind bulk Lembus flour, and make elven bread loaf. So the loaves are essentially the meal we want to make for our colonists, but we can also prepare it into a, a, a essentially a packaged survival meal. Grind salamander, enjoy your elf bread, my friend. Yeah, there we go. So eight elvish bread, 10% consciousness, 25% moving. It is quite expensive on account of him eating an entire loaf of bread. And unrefrigerated, unless we prepare it into that, that kind of final product, it does only last four days. We don't have any form of refrigeration even now. Well, I say even now as if as if we've made any progress whatsoever. We barely have friggin' furniture. My god! Yeah, I wasn't kidding about that. 78 degrees in the research room. Um, there are vent walls somewhere, right? Uh, classic furniture? Yeah, vent walls. We're gonna have to build these absolutely everywhere. Is that an enemy out in the ocean? Hello? On earth are you? Oh my god, it's a xenomorph drone. Right, somebody left a comment on this episode. I completely forgot to mention it. Saying that animals can spawn in now with a, a drone inside of them already. Which is very much horrifying. What is that? Oh, it's, a, it's the faction, I see. Very much horrifying means I'll need to keep a very close eye on the world map from now on. Just to see if we're potentially up against more Xenomorphs. Oh, good. We can craft tier one gems with all those resources that we absolutely do not have. All of this hinges on stone cutting. We can't do anything until we get stone cutting. Wait, what? Elrang? <gasps> I have figured it out. Had 10% consciousness until we fed him the bread that gave him more consciousness. <laughs> That is insane. Oh, he only had 20% consciousness. Sorry, my bad. It's enough for him to stand up and keep working. As long as we keep shoving entire loaves of bread into his unconscious mouth, he'll get back up and carry on. I mean, he's not the best worker, as you can probably tell. Oh, there it is. The end of Phoebe. Back to Perry. And we've done absolutely nothing for our defenses besides build a wall with a giant hole in it. Although, honestly, one more caravan trip out there would do it. We could just replace this gap with embrasures, I suppose. It's far from a perfect solution, but it is it, it is at least something, I guess. Do you have anything non-flammable? 
a, a bone? A big old bone embrasure? I believe the correct term is bone hole. Oh no, no, I'm an idiot. I'm a fool. I'm a fool. They can mine resources. They just can't switch over to stone cutting in the quarry. I thought the implication with that being grayed out entirely was that they couldn't do anything there, but no, it, it, it's absolutely fine. What a redemption art for brain damaged Elrang, huh? You might save the colony. It means if I crank up quarrying to the highest priority, we might be able to make some weapons and armor before our next raid turns up. Ah, oh, there we are. So from the quarry, we might be able to get some arcane gems. I forget what it's called now. Oh, this stuff. Magicite, that's it. We might be able to get some magicite, and then we combine that with the copious amount of Devil Strand that we have, like genuinely an insane amount of Devil Strand. We will be able to craft ourselves some spells. And sure, it's not the weapons and armor I set ourselves off to get, but it's, it's quite a nice outcome. We need 100 steel for it. Damn it. Oh, but look, even then the quarry can still generate chunks as a failure for not getting ore or anything like that. Like pretty much two solid episodes of research and honestly, this is the best defense I've got. Bright red sandbags and a bunch of ditches. We have a slight problem in that we've bred a lot of boomalopes and we can't actually do anything with them. Right now, they don't make chem fuel, they make nutroglycerin, which we need to refine at a biofuel refinery. And we've only just started in the tribal era, let alone moving on to the medieval text at the, at the higher end of the tribal era. We also happen to have an arcane trader here. So I'm thinking, if possible, let's sell all of the boomalope. And of course, we've got a ritual that will allow us to imbue new people with magic. So we could buy a script for, say, demonology, turn someone into a warlock. We could buy ice or lightning. An enchanter would be very, very high tier. In fact, I'm absolutely going to buy that if we can. I'll sell them all of this crap that we're not going to use. Uh, MC Infuse, you can have that one, sure. Rough Onyx, I, I don't know what we would even do with that. And then let's buy anything right now that will help keep us alive right now, given that we haven't got any weapons or armor. Selling the components that we can't use as well? Sure, there you go. Take it. So now if we say begin the ritual of empowering of Santa, the only valid target we've got is TX-69. We turn TX-69 into the colony enchanter. It might not be as useful in combat as a lightning mage or an ice mage for sure, but I think in the long term, it's, it's definitely going to be the most beneficial. Oh shit. And we also got a random reward this time. Rubber wants to j join us. Do they now? You know what? I think we'll take rubber and we'll roll the dice on whatever random thing will turn up at our front door. It's an angel. It is a straight up angel man with mental power. What the fuck is that? Aeron. Rubber subdues the air around him, setting it in motion. He's also magically gifted as well. Oh, shit. What is an Aeron, though? Mental power. Mental power. I, I have no idea what that is. All right, well, welcome aboard Rubber the Angel. He's a very good at crafting. Wow. Okay, you know what? I'm very happy to have this guy on board. He's filled a niche that we needed there. It's always good when you find Rubber filling a niche. I need you to buy us another Mage Scroll in that case, if we can afford it. We, we can still get that Ice Mage if we want. Shaman. What does, what does a Shaman do? Curses, enchantments, and totems. Oh, interesting. Um, I saw lightning, though. And what were they? they? They were some sort of air man. Let's go lightning in that case. Man, I'm going to have to sell one or th two things to make this work. There, that'll do it. Jade, gold, uranium, a phoenix, architect fragments, and xenomorph carapace. But that right there should really solve our combat issues. There he is. Look at that. Oh, yeah, lightning bolt. Just being able to cast that whenever is going to be fantastic. And I have no idea what this mental power is. I, I don't even know the mod that adds that. And then our calculator becomes our enchanting calculator. Perfect. There we are. <laughs> I've got to remind myself about how this class works because it's, it's quite a complicated one. So enchanted body gives bonuses like manipulation and things like that. Uh, reduce the upkeep and cost. That reduces the mana regen penalty. I guess we'll just enable it to see what it does then. Sure. Enchanted Aura, I believe, also gives bonuses to other people around. You can only have one or the other enabled. Okay. So Enchanted Aura, talking, hearing, mental break threshold down. That's that's quite good. And then Enchanted Stone allows us to make artifacts depending on what we target, from what I remember. I, like I said, I won't go too heavy in the, in the whole magic side of things, but... Yeah, there we are. So if we target Steel, Silver, or Iron for the timing, we'll get a different artifact. A level 2. We can target Herbal Medicine, Jade, or Wood, and then level 3, Gold, or Magicite. Wowee. It, it couldn't be any more perfect. What a goddamn redemption arc here. Mad Menowave, that seems like a job for our lightning guy. Oh? 
You traitor, a son of a bitch. Robert is incapable of violence. I spent fucking 3,800 silver on a skill book that you read and aren't going to deliver on. You might be incapable of violence, Robber, but I'm sure as fuck not. March Robber into the ocean. What the hell is that? Mechanite slurry? What, so the fish traps can capture anything? Because that... Oh, look, I'm no paleontologist. There's another fish. Fucking Robber's going to be sleeping with the damn fishes in a minute. Why are you going to tell me what's a fish, Robber? You big bitch. I'll call you Robber because I'm going to throw you in the ocean. <laughs> Please kill the kill the meadow arvo, though. Thank you, minion. Someone, finally... Finally, someone reliable in this freaking colony. Good lord. There's me thinking, oh yeah, don't worry, it's redemption art. We've got ourselves a bloody lightning mage now. No, no, no. That would be far too simple. What we have is another chef. Another person incapable of defending this freaking place. Don't worry, I'll just put the Roomba on the vanguard. Or what about the elf that we have to keep stuffing full of bread? I've never had a more consistent lineup of useless fucking colonists in my life. Of the three colonists we've actually got that are capable of combat... One doesn't have a head, and the other just got bodied by a big fucking pigeon. Sue, it's down to you. It's down to you, Sue. It's down to random Sue. The only thing more random at this point is my blood pressure level at the end of recording one of these friggin' episodes. Okay, okay, right. Seriously now, though. Uh, Sue, go 10 to dot to Christmas. If things get really bad with Perry, we have six tornado generators that we grafted for. We just kill whatever it is. Xenomorphs, insects, elves. Suck them up, blow them away. Oh, God. <laughs> what a horrible choice of words. And judging by the amount of people that the Roomba has attempted to marry, sucking them up and blowing them away is a specialty. Ithildin allows the creation of special lighting using a mithril alloy. Jokes aside, that's actually very good. Uh, bear in mind the research lab got up to 80 degrees earlier because of the amount of torches I need to light that place up. Hopefully those don't put out heat, so that genuinely might solve a massive problem we've got. Uh, assuming we survive long enough at this point to be able to- uh, they use his components. I just trade all my fucking components for a lightning book. Man's insulated. Of course he can't use lightning. El Rang sat down and patted Speedy. It's so sad. This poor, poor guy. He's just so innocent. Just walking through the base, patting the giant salamander, thinking it's just a friendly pet. Not realizing it's our Smartest colonist, arguably. You know what? Just keep it. Just keep your arcane forge. I'm not sure I can get up the, the hope and the dreams that I once had that have been smashed repeatedly by these idiots people. Storytellers. Oh, Eagle? No, it's John Paragon. John Paragon's fine. Uh, the more enemies we have, uh, the more bad events we will receive, which is pretty fucking terrible news right now because we have um, just like a shitload of enemies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, okay. The, 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 the forge is great, assuming we can build the bloody thing. It runs off of psychic powers. Uh, needs steel ingots. I wonder if we could swap that out for something a bit more reasonable, like limestone. Uh, we still need 200. The quarry can rarely, very rarely produce steel. Uh, will predominantly produce iron and coal, but in Rimworld's fashion... There is compacted steel. There's compacted machinery from wars gone by from thousands of years ago. So there is a chance to get steel. It's just very unlikely. Given that this is our only hope right now, I'm going to have to go for it. Have I built anything else out of steel? I've got a quest to go out and grab some steel. The old compound. That'll do it. And if I'm not mistaken, we did recruit an elephant. I say recruit an elephant. We probably didn't give it the choice. Sue, take this elephant that we'll call something like bulky and credible. Take some elvish bread and... You know, we should probably pack that bread properly. It doesn't matter too much. She's going to be away for a couple of days. And here's a collection of dwarfish weapons we can't craft because we don't have a freaking forge. Friendship ended with random research. Semi-random research is my new best friend. A vote for semi-random research on the advent calendar is a vote for sensibility. What is that? We're just digging up spools of copper wire. I'm starting to understand why my videos take so long to upload, Robber. Hell rang, frantically snarfing down an entire loaf of bread before his brain damage sets in. <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't laugh because it's really fucked up. And Sue is riding the elephant upstream to the complex. Another one of these quote-unquote savannas I see. They are very, very cool maps. We quite nice to build a massive base here. We are predominantly here for the steel, but if we do find any information along the way that would be nice you know let's just focus on scoping the place out first she's got 19.77 construction you can set that out before it blows up there you go oh that's it that easy okay we should get a good amount of steel from this hopefully a couple of hundred the pods contain 52 cabbages okay quest complete 
Now we've just got to fight these guys with only... Only Sue. I think, I think let's go back through this door. And then let's blast them with the Frost Ray from a bit more distance. That'll do it. In your own time. I was pathetic. I was actually terrible. There's a shitty little goblin there. Okay, let's claim this one. And then claim this one. Very sweaty stuff. Holding these doors open, that's sweaty. Uh, unbelievable. <laughs> that is the height of my remote tactics. Thank you. Oh, nice. Holy shit. Burn, goblin. Burn. We get behind some cover there. She's completely out of mana, but if we use Chaos Tradition, it, it gives her 40 mana back, right? There you go. Poison. Very nice. Olive, olive, olive trees. Fuck off with your olive trees. I don't care about olive trees right now. Poison the goblin. Die, goblin. Just completely unnecessary. Don't have to kill that goblin at all. I need some sort of catharsis before I go insane. Okay. Take off the walls as well. We only needed 200 for the Arcane Forge. We've got 330. Oh, for God's sake, who is it this time? Earl Dr. Christmas Fleming, will you marry me? <laughs> well, that's quite enough of this game and far enough of this reality for one day. So I'm going to go to bed. Thank you all for watching. I guess I will rename some of these characters tomorrow, plucked from my great names list, because we have some real characters in the colony this time around, for sure. Uh, when I say that, I mean very distinct personalities, appearances, and outward forms. One is a giant snake, and one is a Roomba wearing the skull of our enemies. So, yeah, I think we've ended up with some fairly distinctive people. Thank you all for watching. Do not forget to leave your suggestions for mods down below and to vote on any mods down below. And tomorrow, we continue as if nothing weird happened today. Thank you to Slippy Nips, Snowdog TW, Grayson Tagger, Smack You, Hobo Billy Joel, That Gay Commie, Biv, Ice Wolf, Void Angel, Alluvion Mishap, Hoaxor, Exodius, Tompage, Time Waster, Alex, Nick Danger, 013, Gogolus, and Chase. For their support, the executive producer it is over on Patreon. Thank you all for your support over there, for better or for worse. Thank you as well to Erotha, Platyon, Fatigable, Edgemere, Epilogue, Technomen08, Maya, Shittleda, Justice4, Ilya, Cameron, Omegador, Gavin, Ad Infinitus, Quivalar, Sionimus, and Magister Militum as well.